All right, well, look at the Gotham chest is a good, good thing. Okay. It's been a while since I've made a recap video like this one, but today the Legends of Chess tournament began. It's last tournament of the Magnus Carlsen Tour, and modern day players like Magnus Carlsen, uh, Anish Giri, Jan Nepomnici, Ding Liren are playing, combined with a field of players like Ivanchu, Gelfand, and some of the older folks. Uh, still incredibly strong players, and it'll make for an interesting 10-player system. Magnus and Anish were paired in the first round, and obviously the past few weeks have been eventful. They just played in the finals of the last event. This was their second game, and it set the tone for the rest of the match. Magnus had the white pieces, and the players got out to a Ragozan Queen's Gambit declined. There's a lot of theory here. I personally like to play Queen A4 check, which we've seen before. G3, trying to play the position in a more Catalan manner. Uh, but here, Magnus played Bishop G5, which is a mainline move. Anish attacked it like this, and most people take here because you don't really have any other options. So here, about 2,000 games exist, and Magnus Carlsen plays a move which has been played one time. One time. And he does this because this move induces a pawn push in front of the king. And so when Anish castles, here Magnus plays the next surprise. And he plays the move G4, which, look, wait, 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 again, wait, wait. surprise in front of the king and move, which has been oh, played one time one time and he does this because this move induces a pawn push in front of the king and so when anish castles here magnus plays the next surprise and he plays the move g4 which look again magnus is doing this to get anish out of his preparation he always tries to do this when he plays anish because Anish out of his preparation, when he's playing Magnus, sometimes that edge of, of just kind like of a battling part of it out in the middle noodle. game it goes a little bit to Magnus' like side. One part of it is uncooked. When you have a strong uh, person in terms of preparation, that's what you want to do. You want to get them out of prep. Now, first things first, you can't take this pawn. Uh, during the live coverage, a lot of people were like, what's wrong with this? You're just playing into White's attack. If h5, h3, it's just too dangerous to do this. Uh, you can try to do it, but it's a little bit too dangerous with moves like bishop h6. So instead of that, Anish takes on c3, forces this bishop there, and puts the knight in the center of the board. Magnus thinks for a little bit here, plays the move queen to c2, c5, and takes on c5. Now, you might say, well, why did he do that? Why did he play c5? I mean, that opens up the bishop. Question is, how are you going to develop this? How are you going to develop this? So Anish tries to open the position because he thinks it will be beneficial for him in terms of his development. And the more he can open the center, obviously, the easier it is to play the position. He also plays a move, a very tactical idea, b6. And it's not very good for Magnus to take this because then there's queen b6 with an attack on f2. And not to mention, if you ever play a b6, this rook is just open. So a bit of a gambit system here. Uh, but Magnus... Well, he justifies the move g4 here. He plays the move g5, which, again, looks like it shouldn't make any sense. Because black just takes with the pawn. And if black takes with the knight, well, the actual idea here is you could take. And if queen g5, then you just slowly try to build up some pressure here. So maybe a move like h4. And if the queen hangs out trying to trade the queens, you actually can just simplify. And what ends up happening is that we have an endgame where this bishop is a machine, there's pressure on the g-file, h5 is coming, and these pawns are quite weak. And with the bishop coming on this diagonal and this bishop on this one, not going to be a good position. So in each place, hg5, and now we see the justification of this pawn sacrifice. The pawn standing on g5 is what's called a hook. A hook, which by the way, I surprised Hikaru with this term, he didn't know what I was talking about. <laughs> It's a pawn in front of a king that can be targeted to make pro you know progress in the position. So you target this pawn by playing the move h4. Anish doesn't want to open the position, so he plays g4, and now Magnus plays knight g5. And if you take take, this opens up. Right? If that trade on g5 happens, the pieces will meet on h7. So Anish closes the position with f5. Magnus develops a bishop. He has options here. The reason he developed this bishop is because castling actually too quickly would have resulted in the blunder of the f2 pawn. It takes, and now this. Now it's too dangerous to take this pawn. Because, frankly speaking, white is going to lose material, but black is going to get their entire position shattered. So you will take on d1, for example. I will simply recapture, and black has every piece on the 8th rank. Material does not matter in a position where every piece that you have is on the last rank because you are just going to get blown uh, blown away in the middle of the board. So we have a capture on g5 and a capture with a check, now king b1. But look at the problem. What are you going to do about this? 
if you play bishop b7, I'm going to play queen b3. And I'm adding pressure, and I'm hitting your bishop. And the position is just going to collapse. Not to mention that there's just an open h, excuse me, open h file here. So knight d7 takes on d5. And now Manish sacrifices material in order to try to bring some stability to the position. Now, at first glance, it actually doesn't look so bad. Anish is only down one point, but he's got some active pieces, and obviously this is not the most, you know, easily winning position. You plug this into a computer, it'll tell you it's about plus 2.5, which is decisive at this level, not to mention Magnus at this point up a lot on time, much more comfortable in the position. But he plays a move here that's a little bit, you know, it's very methodical by Magnus. He's up material, so what does he do? He trades queens. I urge you, if you'd like to, pause the video, and you guys have complained in the past that I'm a little quick here, so pause the video. Beep. Try to come up with some sort of attacking plan. Uh, Magnus How was I supposed to hear that if I had paused the video when he told me to? You can play something like Bishop D... Uh, an attacking plan. I don't fuck. That, sure. That doesn't work. That, I don't know. D2 with an attack like this. But the real pause the video moment is about to come. So Anish does not want a queen trade. Queen d6, very nice move, invading. Here f4 is played, discovered check. King goes here, and rook f8 to reinforce the pawn. Now, right here, pause. Find the win for white. Find the win. Stop. Is it rook? Bishop? Nope. Queen take? Check. Why? Nope. Push queen here. Sacrifice. Check. Let's find out. Hold on. Let's make the hold on. I'm going to make the board. Okay. Um set up here. We've got Rook, Rook, King, Pawn, 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 Bishop, Pawn, that's on the fourth file, Pawn, 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 okay, Queen here, King, Queen, Queen here, Bishop, Rook, King. So the so the AI knows the win as well. So, okay. So this is the board, and the AI knows something. AI knows something.
I don't think that's it. Because that's like not forced. Because so there's a win here, and that wasn't forced, so like there's probably a better move to make to get out of that. Okay. <laughs> I didn't like that. We know that's not it. Okay, yeah, I didn't like that either. Oh. That way? I don't know. What the hell is the win? Not gonna be that, right? Now, I don't think I'll ever, ever, ever the time on this but a win okay what forces him to do something if I go here an instant blunder gone okay we know that is there any other way I can check this king. So, if I check here, he just takes. Oh, wait. Let the bar didn't change. Okay. So, he's in check, so you have to take. Oh. Okay, not that way, sorry. Not that way either? Oh, wait. Right? Correct? Oh no, block with queen. Sorry, not fuck this. Done. Game's done. Right? Game's done. Game's over. Game's over, right? It's checkmate. Yes, that was it. Okay, that's the move that Magnus missed. This. Is then take, take, here. Here, block. Let's say he blocks here. Here. Oh, what? Oh, because of this. Yeah, okay. That is checkmate. Wow, that's weird. How do you... It took me a while to figure it out. I feel like it took me less than... I don't know how much time you had. How do you miss that? I mean, I guess we can go find out. But yeah, that's the move. Right here. Force to take, force to take, move here. Force to take, sorry, wrong piece again. Force to take, all right, got. Force this, force to defend, take. Interesting, all right. It's the title of this video is I figured out what Magnus Carlson could in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's uh i would uh, probably have never figured out a tournament or ever gotten anywhere near that game so like i would have never made any moves prior to this setup but it's uh, strange that that was like this is the move that's strange to me 
Now, why isn't this? Oh, that's why. Okay, she can reply because it's not stuck. Hmm, interesting. Very good, you got it right. And you know who didn't get it right? Magnus Carlsen. When I saw Rook F8 played, I said, wait a second, why can't you just play Rook H8 check? Deflect the king away, Queen F8, King H7, Rook H1, and if the queen blocks, you don't actually take the queen. You just take this pawn. By the way, guys, this came from my reading. Good as mine. Five seventeen uh, pog right. pawn and its mate, because the bishop is guarding against the king and the queen is pinned. And the more aesthetic variation is rook h8 check. Obviously, if king here, this is also mate. If king h8 and blocks like this, there is the very pretty bishop takes g7. And that is just, that is a very unfortunate set of circumstances for the black king. And in this position, Magnus Carlsen was brilliant, but not perfect. And he did not see that. He played the move queen to e5. And we'll see in the next 10 moves how he methodically dispatches Anish. First things first, Anish tries to create some sort of counterplay in the time trouble. Magnus, cool, calm, and collected. A good lesson. Go for a trade of pieces to get into a winning endgame when everything is just going in your favor. So trade, knight e3, move the rook to safety, bishop f5. Always look for counterplay for your opponent. He wants knight c2, so the move b3 is played here. A slow move, creating an escape square for the king, so that the king did not have to go here in line of the bishop. Pawn takes, recapture, a few more moves played, a check, the king is going to safety, and here, the choice of which to capture, Magnus takes on g4, and Anish simply resigns because he is down way too much material, and if he continues the game with something like knight takes pawn, simply rook c7 with the fork on the pawns, too much material imbalance, and Anish ended up resigning. I'm not going to spoil the result of the match in case you want to browse around, uh, but actually I'm rather going to now yeah, spoil the result of the entire fun. first day. I will try to uh, do my best to recap the full day and feature one game prominently. Okay, Today, cool. obviously, I had to feature this game. So if you don't want everything spoiled, now's your chance to go away. Amazing. But if not,